right. Oh, yo, that worked. Cool. Theory, it worked. Okay. Excellent. Welcome, everybody, to, uh, whoa, episode seven. Seven. Episode seven of uh, Sunday Tea Book. Okay, super excited. Even mm. though it's pouring rain here in Ottawa, we started the day with a sunny, bright, uh, sunny and bright and beautiful, and that's exactly how I'm feeling about this episode. Right. All right. <laughs> super excited to jump back in here. Hello yeah. there, uh, Josh on YouTube, and hello, Harrison on Instagram. Welcome to uh, and Dresden, Dresden, Dresden Mark. Dre Dresden Dresden Mark. Mark. Yeah, Dresden Mark. Welcome on Instagram. Yes. Um, and today we're brewing some yeah. uh, green tea. Tea uh, Green tea. tea. <laughs> green tea long tea. I always get a clutch when I'm talking about the teas. So uh, uh, we put uh, some uh, leaves like mm -hmm. that, kind of cover the bottom of the. Yeah. Uh, glass tumbler so that will be brand new 2020 oh. Duffo Longjin in the uh, tumbler I'm really excited to have that mm -hmm. uh, it's a really lovely green tea and even more excited to dive back into Sunday tea book uh, for those of you that are new Sunday tea book is where we take a ch we take a, a book articles papers anything that was originally written in uh, Chinese pretty tough to access but full of great information and we bring it to you guys here live and we're actually translating it live okay so this why is this amazing because I think the tendency might be to think oh my god it's a live translation book reading oh, right fall asleep not at all okay if you read a great book with full of good information you get the good information but if you're with us translating First, you're participating. Sometimes we'll be hunting for a word. You can help us find the word, but more importantly, you're going to be witnessing why a lot of this confusion around Chinese tea exists, right? What is the wording used in Chinese and how it gets twisted and confused, and we're gonna unconfuse it and untwist it. It's gonna be a great, it's been great for me. Um, you guys gave us the idea. I've been enjoying it. It's a great uh, uh, language lesson for me too. Yeah, it's great for everybody. Um, so on that note, we need you guys to chip in with comments and questions. Um, be as clear as possible because the way we're going to do it... Oh, yo, a little bit of music <laughs> in the background. Oil. Yay! So chip in with your comments and questions. Ask us anything. Be as detailed as possible. We're going to have a great session tonight. It's going to be super fun. A really interesting section coming up. Absolutely. So we're continuing with uh, my mom's uh, book, China Tea. And uh, you will be uh, seeing the text and uh, we will do the live translation. Mm -hmm. It's a great book for people who just get into tea, especially Chinese tea. And for those who has been in Chinese tea, it's a great chance for us to talk about some tea names, tea terms, a lot of the uh, confusing things and get things sorted out and in the future reading so this will be a great foundation for us to yeah really great foundation right we're going to baseline yeah. a lot of our terminology we're going to all get on the proverbial same page and uh with and with china tea so the way we're going to approach this book this book is actually written in chinese and english um but but um as you'll see as i read through it so the translation's a little bit dicey, right? So I'm going to read a section, mm. and I'm going to point out the parts that I... I already smell the tea. Right? It's so aromatic. This is so great. So it, the leaf is already nutty. A little bit of sweetness in that, and like nutty sweetness. Oh, it almost smells like a, like a, a green tea dessert, if you can imagine how uh, amazing that is. So anyway, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to come up with all the things I found confusing from the passage and kind of reiterate what I got out of it. Jen is going to uh, make sure I don't miss anything. She has read over the Chinese part and if anything was completely lost in the translation, she's gonna make sure we don't miss a thing. And down in the description below, there's going to be a link to the finished translation up on our webpage, the uh, sort of refreshed, renewed uh, translation. And um, yeah, so for those of you on Instagram, we are going to be reading along with the book on the screen, scrolling, highlighting, all this cool stuff. We cannot do that on Instagram. So if you're interested in hanging out with us today and going through this section, jump on over to our YouTube channel and join us on our live. Um, and, other, and once you get there, if you haven't already, you can click the subscribe button. 
-hmm. Click on the little notify bell so you'll know whenever we go live or post a new video. We've got some really exciting videos coming out for you guys. Little teaser hint. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that I, I feel like I missed something in the YouTube cliche. Subscribe, notify. Oh, and tell all your friends. Give us a thumbs up at the end if you like the content. Yes. Let all your friends know if you think this is good for people who are really into tea uh, and, they want, and you want them to find out about us. We would appreciate it. Yes. So I'm going to sign off on the Instagram and I'm going to slide on over to Utah, YouTube. I see that Utah. Ha Utah. <laughs> Utah. Utah. I see that Hacha Holiday already slid over. Oh, sorry guys on Instagram that have to see my big face. But bye bye. We'll see you on the YouTube side. Yeah. So, nth, nth, uh, we're heading over to YouTube now. So, we'll see you there. All right, guys, very cool. I'll do a quick share to IGTV. All right, Sunday tea book. Let me see. Here's Episode some. Seven. Yeah, so, Josh out. says, just wonder, is this a permanent time change? No, it's not. It's Great just, question. Yeah. I was going to say because something it's about right that. Because right in the middle of we're the doing, <laughs> We're doing a green tea. And we didn't notice until we had to make a time change. My mom had her 75th mm -hmm. birthday today. So I had to zoom into that, like literally, you know, with the, that web uh, camera application there, uh, to zoom. But uh, now we're at 7 p.m. having green tea. I'm a little bit nervous about my sleep, but yeah. hopefully it goes well. <laughs> yeah. He said he's uh, actually writing from the dining table right now. And I'm not sure if I would be able to watch in future if this is this time which is a real tragedy don't worry it's not a permanent at all no yeah. it's actually i <laughs> i feel like i prefer in the afternoon too otherwise mm. i feel like the whole sunday i i know there's something yeah. in the end it yeah it's just that. sort of looming there right yeah, something's yeah. coming up you got to stay on on edge be prepared yes, it's a bit yes. late in the day it also constricts our tea choice right so i like i really like 1 p.m because yes, we can yes. choose you know any, any tea, tea we want and that's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. All right, so, um, oh, I forgot the mouse. I gotta run and get the mouse. I need the mouse to scroll through the book. I'm gonna be right back. Yes. All right, mouse hang on. Mouse is guys. very important. <laughs> that's how we highlight stuff. <laughs> if it's not one thing, it's the other. I'm telling you what. All right, so. I think without further ado, we can flip over to the tea book, right? So let's head over there. All right. I'll try and avoid the sound effects, guys. Sorry about that. A little bit. You should put it in the sound effects. I don't know if I can. I'm really, uh, I mean, maybe. I just don't know. Make sure that's working. Nice. All right. We are live. All right. Sunday night live. Here we go. All right, so as Jen said, we're, in, we're going through China Tea, uh, Jen's mom's book, a great foundation uh, for beginners and experts alike. It really covers everything. And last week we covered uh, tea. So this week we're diving into an exciting topic of tea sets. All right, circle that with my left hand. All right, so let's get on with it. So as I said, I'm going to read the section and then we're going to uh, and then I'm going to give you my impression of it and what I learned. So I'm probably going to read like most of this. Mm -hmm. Most of this, uh, it's only a couple paragraphs. So here we go. Uh, do you want to do a quick comment check or did you already do that while I was yeah, running around? Comment check. Let's do a quick comment check just before we go. So yeah, we had the question about the new, the time change was just temporary. Just <laughs> hey, for the this holiday week. had a dinner at five. Dinner at five, yeah, very, cool. that's a good time too. Uh, glad to hear, happy birthday to mom. Yes, indeed, and I love the afternoon tea as well. Because I Yes, yes, exactly. Mm. I think it's a better time for, in general for people to be able to have whatever tea they want. Yeah. Hello, Simmerjeet on YouTube. And uh, cool. So we'll keep on rocking. Okay, here we go then. Let me get a sip of tea before I start. It was a, we put that in the fridge. After I take it out and just let it sit in the cup, it started to warm up and yeah. I could have smelled that before I even brewed yeah, it. Yeah, the cup wasn't even warm. The um, it's just the tea warmed up to room temperature. It's super hot. So this sort of um, sweet, nutty, green aroma started to waft up out of the mm. cup. It smelled like a green tea dessert. Really yes. delightful. All right. Tea sets. The tea sets are super fine. It is no exaggeration to say that they are half of the tea culture. To study the tea is to know and understand the tea sets well. Choosing suitable tea sets. Different kinds of tea require different tea sets 
In particular, for some specialty, only in specialty sets can brew its characteristics and its unique charm. In plain English, he, that makes tea with different and suitable tea sets. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in. For example, brew scented tea in a covered tea bowl, green tea in a glass, like us, and oolong tea in a complete gongfu sets. Since tea sets can not only set off the luster of the tea soup, but also affect the taste and aroma. One more, I think that's good for now, right? I think that's good for now. Great, okay. So, um, just going back to the first little intro paragraph, I think pretty straight up, right? Mm -hmm. I, I really love the use of the word super fine. I just think it's great. What it's, is super fine? I think. It's not really right. We wouldn't use that in a, right? normally in a book. It's just super fine, right? It's cool. So yeah. It just means that there's a lot of things to know about it. Mm. Ah, so it's see, that's, a, that's lost. It yeah, just sounds yeah. like a... Like it sounds just like they're amazing, which is also true. Yes, yes. As uh, the uh, is more talking about, it's actually a big topic. That's mm. then the, it kind of makes sense of the later sentence, which means the half of the tea culture is just right as right. complicated. You know, a lot of uh, details and stuff. So I don't know. I'd love to hear from you guys out there. Like for me, I I don't know if I should even say this, but I'm going to. Yeah. For me, I, getting into tea, I'm so absorbed with the tea itself. I have to say that I kind of, um, I know the sets are cute and everything, but I, I kind of overlook that importance that they're talking about here. Mm. And it is a really important part of, uh, of like they say, preparing and, and making tea. So I'm really, I think I'm going to get a lot out of this section for sure. Mm. It's actually great. The whole chapter of Kara covers a lot of content we haven't had a chance to explore yet on our channel mm -hmm. so that's great yeah that's super great just like tea sets are super fine super fine and a really deep topic that has lots of interesting niche which is what it really means yes all right so in para one there under choosing suitable tea sets mm -hmm. um basically what i got out of this was that the right tea set is going to the right tea wear is going to bring out the best of the tea that you're brewing. And um, tea sets really have a whole set. It does. Setting, does it? I, I, it, I think I tea, tea wear, wear. I think they mean tea wear. I think you're or right like about that. Vessels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's not. It doesn't have to be It does sound set. like the whole, you know, like yeah. when we have a travel set, it comes with pitcher, guy, one cup, yeah. blah, blah, blah. It just generally means tea wear. The choice of tea wear, yes. right, is, um, is really going to bring out the best. And you want to choose the right tea wear. And sometimes that's a very simple choice, right? A glass. Mm -hmm. It's so easy, but it's the right choice for green tea. Mm -hmm. I had to chuckle at the plain English. Sorry, I uh, threw that in. I'm not supposed to put those in, but I threw in a little chuckle because it's just cute in that. Do you say that? I don't think it's you plain it's, English. It's that the English here isn't so plain. Why it's funny? The English right. here is pretty um, a little bit mixed up and stuff. So okay, um, but okay. yeah, we wouldn't usually Do write you use that. that as a, in Chinese, it just means in a simpler way, in the more right. That's what we would be likely to say too, right. in simpler terms. Yes. Um, yes. And then they go on to restate some of what they've just said, right? Yeah. Um, hey, guess guess what is a covered tea bowl? Uh, let's let them guess. Covered tea bowl. What the heck is that? <laughs> right. Let me let me uh, pop it with a little da -da -da -da. covered tea bowl. I think any. I think everybody can guess what that is, right? That's probably a gaiwan. I just assume. Mm -hmm. Before you drop the lid on the ground. Mm. <laughs> sure. All right. So a covered tea bowl is just a, a gaiwan, and. I think the important thing here in the, is in the last sentence, right? So the tea set is not only to show off the luster of the tea soup, mm -hmm. which is maybe a little bit obvious why we choose a white, mm -hmm. white or glass, but it also will affect the taste and aroma of the tea. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of folks know that, but I think it's interesting also to people getting started. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's rock on with para two then. Okay. <laughs> HR Holiday says always buy extra lids. Great, <laughs> great advice, right? How many, yes. how many painful moments have tea, tea lovers had where the lid it just slips out of the hand while you it's know, getting washed or whatever? I found the saucer is what I mm. break a lot. What or happened? Chip. Yeah, because I, I sometimes I brew some tea and I left that there and I go do something else and come back and the guy one just stuck to the saucer mm -hmm. and I forget and I lift it up and it drops. 
Yeah. I chip like a two soldier just like that, that. is so frustrating. Has that ever happened to anybody where the you get a little binding of the saucer mm. to the guy one, then the next time you pick up the guy one, the saucer follows along yeah, and then releases. Drop. Yeah. Heart That's attack. a major heart attack. All right, so um, moving okay. on to the next paragraph here. So I'm just going to go full book so people can see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So around the teas getting, brewing, holding of tea soup and drinking, etc., there are various tea sets, such as a set of formal gong fu tea set needs more than 10 utensils, which include tea canisters, teapots, tea plates, tea pitchers, tea cups, aroma cups, cup saucers, teaspoons, tea holders, tea pins, <gasps> filter cups, tea towels, water basins, etc. These objects are small but exquisite. While choosing the tea sets, you should focus on your own preference instead of price. For those people who drink tea every day, they care, they care the comforts of the sets rather than others' evaluations. However, keeping the tea set as a collection is another cup of tea. Chuck, chuck, chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. All right, these are great. Chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. <laughs> another cup of tea. Oh, look, I'm going to come to that. I don't want to dive in with that right away. But uh, I think Para 2 is actually not bad. I found mm. this one a little chunky to understand, but basically around the T's getting the beginning is... Okay, okay. Around. Yeah. Is that weird? Here? Like, is it around that? That was a direct... Yes. Like, the whole for beginning of the first in, sentence is pretty hard to understand. The T's getting, like that, yes. sounds almost like the harvesting yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to us. But around is, again, we can figure it out, though. It That's means, really like a Chinglish, like a direct English to... Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I love some Chinese either. Uh, direct Chinese to English is means around this topic. Mm. So the topic of tea getting is uh, not a tea harvesting, is uh, fe fetching the tea, like a, uh, you know the teaspoon. It. Yeah, what? portioning it out for your, for your, oh, for your brewing, right? Yes, portioning mm. that out. Okay, mm. that's a great word. I don't mm. even know how to say tea getting. But portion it mm. out. Yes, like uh, it, later on it talks about the canister or tea storage container mm. or the uh, teaspoon. So those are how yeah. you get the tea. Basically it's the short trip from the canister to the brewing vessel. Absolutely. Right? Does mm. it include the harvest or something? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But getting has that feeling uh, in English to me more of like a harvest. Oh. But I, I was pretty sure we weren't talking about I that here, but that. it was pretty tricky to figure out. Mm -hmm. And, and there's tons of uh, names which we would like talk about later in the chapters. Yeah, and then in the then they go on to um, so tea's getting so then the other things that you do with it with it with your teaware right you brew it it holds your tea soup it holds it while you drink it um, there's various teaware for all of these things I think that's what basically the first sentence is and then they go on to enumerate a bunch of them in that that par that sentence I couldn't get through with one breath right. <laughs> Um, a formal gong fu tea set has more than 10 utensils, including, and I think everybody's familiar with, at least with mo with some of these, right? Mm -hmm. um, canisters, teapots, tea plates, so a lot of stuff, which I was pretty happy to see we're going to get into um, as we go through, right? Because it is a big topic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and of course, these objects are small but exquisite. So every, I think that's obvious. Everybody loves teaware. I, I right. think, I think. Yes. Even though I kind of ignore it, when I'm in a teaware shop, I go a little bit yeah, crazy, yes. right? It's just so fun yes. to look at the cute little bowls and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, paragraph three here, while choosing the tea sets, I think that's got some good meat in it. I think they're saying that you want to go with what you like over the price like uh, does it mean don't worry about the price that's what it sounds like oh. it's a little bit confusing it sounds like like they're mm. trying to make me spend a lot of money in the book oh <laughs> it's the opposite ah. it's the quite opposite because uh, maybe it's a cultural difference or something a lot of times uh, when people buying things they think the 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 Oh. Pricier the better. Right. It means price reflects uh, the quality. A lot of people might be, you know, compare who has the more expensive stuff as mm -hmm. if it's better. And uh, so it means that you don't have to uh, just look for the expensive ones. Right. You have to 
uh, get the one that you're comfortable to oh, use that sort you of like, enjoy. Sort of like follow your heart or follow yes. what what you feel good with. Yes, fits yes. your hand, makes yes. you comfy. Yes. Okay, okay. That's why in the end it said, uh, however, keep uh, as a collection. Like if you are collecting those, that's another. Uh, Cup right. Of tea. Oh my God. So I, that's I a really, turning, right? So it means before that you don't need to talk. Yes. Talk about those. I have to ask you, is it is does the Chinese text actually say that's another cup of tea? No. Right. So this is actually that's an English expression. It's an Chinese English expression, and it it's but they nailed it, and it's it's a total funny or maybe you a little bit cheesy one. pun. <laughs> no, but it really works in a tea book. However, uh, so basically instead of yeah keeping tea sets as a collection, so. However, collecting teaware is another cup of tea. Mm. Then price and oh, it's a whole, it's actually basically telling then, us two yeah. things. It's it's a different topic and it's mm. out of scope here. We're not talking mm. about yeah. that here. We're yeah. talking about practical teaware yeah. for everyday or for occasional use, whatever. But it's mm. for our us to use. Yeah. Right on. Not for a museum. Awesome. Okay. Great. Let's go out to the. Uh, actually, I'll leave this up in case people had questions about it. Right. Is and we'll go comment? out to uh, comment land. There's been lots. Um, oh. Last was Simmerjeet uh, says happy birthday to my mom. I'll pass it along, oh. Simmerjeet. And uh, HR Holic says always buy extra lids. Yeah. Uh, I only use cheap guy ones. Never broke a, a, a shibo or teapot though. Whew. Yeah, That's so far. We we'll have chips. <laughs> I've only chipped. That's my maximum, right? But uh, mm. so far, you know, I kind of, you know, when it comes to teaware, I kind of try to keep the mindset that someday it's all gonna break right like earthquake i don't know but i it helps me relax when i use it and don't be so nervous but be careful it keeps my mind alert that i don't want it to be today but someday it's gonna break so i'm kind of yin yang you know on both sides of it in a zen it just gets me in a zen mood when i handle it especially when i'm washing the dishes i would like to put my head in the sand that's my <laughs> nervous time when they're when especially if you're using soap anyway so uh only broke gaiwan lids though yes those are i think those are probably the worst and uh d sievers seversified oh d d's versified d i like that diversified d seversified is that a play on words your handle anyway i love <laughs> it i use inexpensive guy ones as well uh, broken and I, and it's broken an actual bowl. I think I've broken everything when it comes to Gaiwan. I think I dropped one at the tea festival. Oh, complete Gaiwan. Broken. We did. Oh, mm. yeah, we did that. So what happened was, uh, uh, we went to the tea festival. We dropped the only one we brought for brewing. After that, every tea festival we brought the extra. Was that Ottawa? I think so. Then we used the product, of course. Otherwise, we have nothing to brew with. Oh. Yes, Early now times, I right? always bring two of everything, two yeah. sharing pot, two yeah, nylon, yeah, yeah. and since then we've been always okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe lost a lid or something, but it. Oh, H H a holiday had to run for a bit, and Simmerji says I'd like to find nicer guy ones, especially Celadon teaware. Mm, mm. Very nice. Yeah. Yes, we're gonna get into that uh, soon. We have a pretty nice Celadon guy one that I quite like. That's yeah. that light green color. Am I yes. right? Yeah. Yes. I, really I think that. so. All oh. right. So uh, carrying on, I'm going to flash back to the book only so that we're not blocking the uh, so that we're not blocking the text and I'll try to remember to come back to the full picture a little bit quicker uh, next time. So knowledge about tea, a little subsection here, really cute, I love these. Tea and its suitable set. Green tea, transparent glass, or the tea sets in white porcelain, celadon, or blue and white porcelain. Scented tea, celadon, Blue and white porcelain tea sets. Uh, tea sets. Yellow tea. Milk white, yellow vitreous enamel, orange tea sets. Black tea. Sand fired white porcelain. Uh, sand fired white porcelain, red vitreous enamel, warm colored porcelain sets, or coffee pots. White tea. White porcelain tea sets. Oolong tea. Sand fired tea sets, or white porcelain tea sets. All right, and that is that section. So, what are we getting out of this? So basically, this is a little, like this little section in green down here is like a little Cole's notes or a little reference section kind of, right? Yes, it's basically yes. telling us, I think what I see is this is the teaware you should be using for different types of tea or recommendations for teaware yes. for various types of tea. So 
For green tea, you can use just a regular glass. Or, uh, and again, wherever you see tea sets here, if you say tea wear, I think it's going to be a bit smoother, mm. right? Or white porcelain tea wear, celadon tea wear, or blue and white porcelain tea wear. Okay, good. And they basically go down. One of them that I found not understandable was sandfire. I mm -hmm. think they mean clay, but I'm not sure what that is. Sandfire. It just says sandfire. Sand, and then for, um, let me highlight it for the folks there. Black tea. Sandfire. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Are you messy? And down here with the uh, white tea also. Sandfire. I think I hit it. My little thing got in the way. But uh, it should get out of the way soon. It's actually the shot. Purple uh, clay. Uh, 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 purple clay. Okay. Purple clay. I don't know why I call that sandfire. Weird. Mm. But that means uh, zisha chahu. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so that was a little bit tricky. And also, I actually had to look up vitreous enamel, but it's not as, uh, I think most people, a lot of people might know what that is, but that's basically glazed, glazed porcelain or like in, it can be um, even glazed metal, I think. Like our camping coffee cup is, uh, it's got an enamel coating on it. I'm not sure. I think probably they're talking about porcelain here, though. It's actually just saying the red, red porcelain, the uh, color red. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So like how we have those blue teacups, that's that vitreous enamel coating. It's, it's uh, non-porous, basically. Mm -hmm. Still non-porous, it's mm -hmm. still porcelain mm -hmm. uh, stuff, but uh, different color than they say warm tone porcelain. So it's talking about different colors of porcelain right, keywords. Right, right. And is this the inside or the outside or is it is it mentioned? All can work. Okay. Uh, the that's a great um, question because I just want to mention here. You will notice that here it even advocates for a lot of color, mm, uh, different color tea wear and stuff like that. And uh, most of the time, uh, I I often tell people if you're buying something by white or glass. Mm. The the difference is uh, my consideration is most of a versatile. So if you buy white or glass or those mm. kind of thing, it kind of work for all. Yeah, you but notice white porcelain is on just about every one of those. Yes. Mm. Well, if you have a say a red or a warm toned uh, glaze, really beautiful, great for black tea. But if you uh, brew green tea, then it doesn't. It, the color kind of a uh, will become a little bit weird. A little bit lost, washed yeah. out, huh? And you probably mm. notice here the color and the tea liquor color kind of matches. Mm. Mm. So this is not for like evaluating or any purpose. It's for your enjoyment. A little ah. bit of green, you know, that celadon color with the green tea. It emphasizes that greenness. Right. It's more of an right. enjoyment uh, setting. Mm. Mm. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. All right, so that is the uh, that is the tea set section. So I'm gonna scroll back down to the next area. Mm -hmm. So I, I mentioned earlier that they were going that we're gonna get into each of those. You know, there's many types in the text back there. It mentioned the all the different more than ten. Um, what was it? More than ten tea where in an official Gung Fu set. So now we're going to dive into them, mm. starting with store the tea canister. Mm. Let me just switch my page. And I, th I don't know, I think I like to switch to just hide us while I read, just so people who are reading along don't yeah, have us and maybe walking. we can be huge when we're doing comments. Ah, cool, yeah. And come back to the book if we need to. So that we can use the controller extra. Yes, yes a little bit more. Yeah. All right, here we go, guys. Tea canister. When the tea drinker knows the importance of canisters, or well, actually canesters, hmm, which in indicates that he starts to understand the tea culture. I'll do a few more, that's pretty Should short. This. Functions, canisters for holding tea leaves. Types, it is common to see with porcelain canister, iron canister, paper canister, enamel canister, tin cans, and galley pot. Selections, first and foremost is better is better stealing, followed by odorless texture, damp proof and light type. Volatile as tea flavor and easy to absorb moisture, which makes the flavor dissimilated, lost or changed by other flavors. Tin cans have a better effect on damp proof antioxidation, light type and odor protection. The gallopots have a relative stable temperature and humidity and have a character of damp proof and odor protection. 
The porcelain canisters are in an attractive appearance and elegant styles. The iron canisters are closed sealed but poor insulation. Paper canisters are good at air permeability and damp protection and odorless. In addition, the stainless steel canisters in the market are simple and practical. Great. Mm. Whoops. All right, so we'll go off full size. Let's do it. That's not common. They probably still need the text as well. Oh, sure. Yay! There oh. we go. We're still looking at the text. <laughs> okay. Sorry for the excessive transitions, guys. We're just getting used to this. So, I found the first, first, the opening pretty interesting. That has a grammar mistake, doesn't it? It's not a full sentence. It's a when something, which indicates. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, that, that happens quite a bit. And uh, I didn't notice until now, just reading, I actually read the misspelling, canesters, but it's just canisters with a little switch up. But um, I was, but what, what caught me about that first sentence was how um, they link it to really getting into, uh, starting to understand tea culture. And because mm -hmm. I think I'm, if a lot of people are like me, a lot mm -hmm. of their tea is sitting around in the bag, like in the merchant's <laughs> packaging. Mm -hmm. Just zip that up and tuck it away somewhere safe. Mm -hmm. Tell me straight, is this wrong? <laughs> How should I say? Ideally, you don't want to leave that in a bag forever. Right. Because the zipper is... Uh, it's not as... Uh, it's not so foolproof. Full, yeah. Right, and it's, right. Uh, uh, how should I say? It's temporary, you know. Like any, mm. ideally, ideally, packaging is packaging. Right. Uh, on the other hand, a lot of people here only buy like a twenty-five, fifty grams of tea. I was going to mention. Have that. a mini jar is not realistic. Right. Right. But if you. But they are, are super cute. <laughs> they are super cute. Right. Yeah. But you're planning on store a tea for a longer time. If you're not drinking that in the next month or two, or or three, <laughs> right? Maybe considering put them in a, uh, a little proper, bit more of a proper tea canister. Yeah, that should have proper seal and uh, especially or when you're aging something. Uh, right, of course, yeah, when you're aging it's something. It's kind of important right. to have a proper. Yeah, as you were talking, it dawned on me that um, in, in Chinese tea culture, a lot mm -hmm. of people are buying tea by the half kilo. Right, a kilo, two half kilo, two kilo, three kilo. So I guess in that case, it's not getting brewed up in a, in a month, mm. right? So then nowadays it's better. Like a, like a twenty, thirty years ago, if you go to Beijing and stuff, how they buy those standard jasmine teas, uh, uh, those big square packed tea, one is a two fifty or five hundred one, and they buy like a ten, twelve of that right. uh, once and. The whole packaging is right, from right. the floor to this high. Right, like six to ten kilo. Mm, mm. And, then. and that's probably weeks, just weeks of tea. And I oh, wow. Mm. I guess it's For the on, whole family. It's on family, all the time. But it's really, gotcha. we're really drinking a lot of tea. Kind of wow. Thing. So down in, um, so down in the next section. Oh, just one, oh, one oh, yeah, more yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't, don't feel rushed. I just, uh, you might wonder why that indicates you start to understand mm, the tea culture. Totally. It's that not a point. very... Uh, uh, straight up like a mark or anything it's just that sometimes when you're so into that like every little detail even tea storage oh. you're into this kind of detail it kind of means you're at a certain level right maybe right. the first one is uh, choosing a guy one mm. and the more advanced one is choosing a proper tea right. storage right mm. that's true that's a good one okay and the function is pretty straightforward um, canisters for holding tea leaves right it's basically to hold tea mm -hmm. um, under types, though, I had there's an interesting word here. Yes. Um, all kinds of different materials that are pretty understandable. Mm -hmm. I, I I had to look this up. I was gonna ask you, what mm -hmm. is that? I have I had no idea, and I did look it up, to um, so I could at least I don't know if anybody would know that. <clears throat> it turns out this is a small glazed pot. Um. So. It's uh, it's actually a word. I was so look, it came up in the English glazed. dictionary. It's not. It's a pottery. In Chinese, it's a pottery. Oh, clay. It, yeah, clay actually. Small because yeah, it, we mentioned those old uh, quote so unquote glaze, so like a porcelain or stuff. Right. Porous. This uh, non-porous. This is the porous one. 
So oh, more like a clay urn. Yeah, and oh. if you see the picture, if maybe you can there. screw maybe up, I oh, think. Oh, it's up on the Chinese ah, side. Yes, Whoops. the last one they call gallopod. Yeah. That's not, not, uh, not sanded. That's not. Uh, this is clay. you can tell it's clay. It's clay, right? Right. So it's porous. It's gonna have, uh, and they actually go into the the adds the advantages and disadvantages of it down mm -hmm. below. Um, you know, if you go to any poor factory and they have some this kind of a they have a huge size of those inside those are good stuff oh yeah that's mm. the uh if they the if a poor factory spend money on buying this kind of a clay big storage you're one, talking like rain barrel size oh rain barrel right? size like of really course. big right but uh, clay because it's really heavy and to transport right, right. and everything and it, it can must break. be yeah it must be mm. stored the good stuff like a uh, for good stuff so mm. We even learned on our on our trip to uh, Jingdezhi that old times, I mean, we were talking about the actual glazed ones that were fired, but yes. those big clay things back then especially were very hard to make because firing them yes. was tricky, right? Really and probably hard. today it's still expensive because you need a big darn furnace. This is the easier. Uh, porcelain is the hard one. Mm. Clay, uh, the, the, the pottery is relatively easier to make. The, right. the, the success rate is better. Right, not so as so not sensitive as to firing temperature, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm, cool, cool. Little uh, tangent there for <laughs> you guys. All right, so back into, sorry about this fast scroll. Right. So, um, so there's a typo here. I read it as it is. So first and foremost is better for stealing. It's just supposed to be sealing, mm. um, so airtight. Mm -hmm. um, that was one thing I noticed. And um, mm -hmm. other than that, I think the first paragraph was pretty understandable. Uh, you want a good seal, you want them to keep out odors, keep mm -hmm. out moisture, keep mm -hmm. out light. Uh, it's pretty straight up here. Mm -hmm. um, all the main things we talk about when we want to store tea. Absolutely. And, and, and the reason why is there too, because tea is volatile, it absorbs mm. moisture, it absorbs odors, you got to keep those things off of it. Mm. And we actually have a video talking about tea mm. storage, so if you want to know a little bit more or yeah I'll put the link items. down in the description yeah. after we're done here so that you can get to that easily yeah that's mm -hmm. a good one um, and then paragraph two also uh, pretty uh, pretty straightforward now it's going into basically from what I get different materials and the advantages and or disadvantages of them right Absolutely. but now that we know what gallipot is I think it's a little easier to understand Gallipot. right the advantage uh, the advantage or disadvantage so the Galapod have relatively stable temperature and humidity, damp proof and odor protection. Right. Mm. I'm just wondering if they breathe a little bit too because they're porous, but very minor breathe. Mm. Mm, I was, uh, as you say that, I was uh, thinking that uh, because uh, you primarily want the seals well sealed, on the other hand, the porous is quote unquote not well sealed. They're, those are not uh, contradictory to each other. Mm. Because their porous is not like a, 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 a real like opening tunnels or stuff. That's right. You know? it's, that's, it's still going to protect from odor, certainly, right? Yeah, it has this protection. That breeze and stuff is really, really minor. Unless mm. you really stuck that in a strong scented area. Right. You cannot do that. But it does provide a good protection while letting the tea breathe. Mm. It's like we still use pottery to boil water. The water doesn't leak everywhere. So it's not... Yes, the porous not, is not mm, as uh, that's, you know breathe as right. le the the not sealed the right. leaking air. But great for uh, a great storage place for aging kuar, right? Mm -hmm. I think that can be a, a good takeaway from this section. Absolutely. What else did I notice in here too? The um, um, porcelain can canisters can be really pretty, of course. Iron canisters. Now that's something I honestly have never come across. Mm -hmm. um, they, I think what they're saying there, iron canisters are closed sealed, mm -hmm. which I think means tightly sealed. Tightly sealed, yeah. But poor insulation, obvious, right? Because mm -hmm. it's metal. If it's hot or cold yes. out, it's going to be hot or cold. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, but I have never come across an iron one. Thin metal ones, yeah. Mm. It's a, uh, uh, how should I say? Like it's a. Uh, uh, how should I say that in English? What I mean is uh, here uh, in North America, people are, the living standard is all about the same. 
Right. So you wouldn't see a lot, of, but in China you would have people from s rural area who really using those uh, things like a metal, weird metal thing from somewhere and reuse oh, right, it or right. stuff. So a lot of the material we we don't have or see often here, but right. uh, it would, or even maybe in Beijing, Shanghai, those big cities you wouldn't see them, but in some rural area mm. far in the west or something people were still using that, right. so that's why they cover it here. If they hadn't have covered tin up here, I would have just thought they meant tin, but they explicitly called out tin, which we yeah, do use material, a lot. Yeah, it's the material, right. Right, we use, like we have old, you, know, you get some tea in an old tin canister, but it's pretty nice and big, so you yeah. start a new side because it seals pretty good. And, yes, yes. Hmm. And paper is another one that we, uh, we, I don't see much, but we have that as a, as a canister, and again, it's got yeah. the nice, balance of breathability. Mm. Imagine like a paper box, shipping box, those are kind of paper-ish. Right, right. Right, or... And we have those... Oh. No oh, there we go. This is paper. There we go. This is paper, right? And because, it, like they say, air permeability, guess what's in it? Puar. Puar. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> so it's actually a decent, it's another decent aging alternative for puar, right? right. Good. That's our 2012 uh, for a tour that I that we put aside. Yes, yes. Okay, I got a, a little tangent on that. We thought we were out of those, and those were so fine. Mm -hmm. Those were really good. And then, I guess this we shouldn't admit this, but we were tidying up and we found some more, <laughs> and we were both so excited. We were like, should we drink it? And we're like, you know what? Let's just be disciplined and let's put it away. Yes. So we've got that on kind of our taste every so many years. Mm, uh, schedule mm. so we've got our notes from uh, the old one and we'll keep going yes. with that all right so I'm gonna uh, let's go out for comments here yeah so, uh, what did you do? oh god you remember I'm that. trying to trying to stay on the ball with those so that's uh, awesome where were we uh, uh, oh so Simmerjeet there I'd like to find nicer um, guy ones especially Celadon right and uh, so D D Severified says I mainly used uh, I mainly use tin canisters for most of my teas I have wondered how to store my mm. Puar cakes. Mm. Okay, well hopefully you got something out of today's uh, thing, uh, out of today's uh, tea book. Mm. Clay, good. Um, you can get pretty nice paper canisters. We have a nice one that we use for um, sort of more bulk wholesale tea too, which is also a paper canister, really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Um, oh, and <laughs> you saw that in pursuit of tea. Uh, uh, Sebastian? Sebastian, mm. they use... Uh, uh, steamer, the Chinese bamboo steamer. Remember, he right. has a whole stack of that, those. Steamers. I thought that was brilliant, and I that was really. I totally yes. forgot about that. Yes. So yeah, and that's a perfect oh. kind of a size for poor cake. And dudes, cost effective. Like you go to a <laughs> you go to a Chinese kitchen store, you can pick up a stack of those. You know, they're like ten bucks each, fifteen bucks each, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and they definitely breathe. Um, you want to do your due diligence on your odor defense because yes. they're not going to keep odors out at all. But if you've got not a nice well tea storage well. space, mm -hmm. um, they're going to breathe. They're going to keep the light off of it. Mm -hmm. um, you still don't want them in anywhere near a window. But yeah, I thought mm. that was so cute. Yes. And like yes. you say, drop right in. Mm. Yes. Okay. And then, uh, hey, holiday. I've heard to age oolong, you need at least a few jing. Hmm. Mm, not necessary. I see what they're saying. Is uh, actually you can uh, expand that to almost any tea. If right. you want to uh, age it, you need a certain quantity. You know, if you do like a fifty grams and stuff, uh, again, aging is a uh, humidity and temperature wise. Mm -hmm. With bigger quantity, it's. Uh, it's just uh, easier to maintain those. Right. And even sometimes to, uh, if not for aging, even just for maintain the quality, if you put a five gram of tea outside in the individual package and the rest of 100 gram, 200 mm. gram on the package altogether, five gram goes uh, stale quicker right. than stuff. Right. Just it's, in general, get, tea prefer to be a big quantity together. Yeah, you get resiliency in mass, mm. right? Mm. Sure. And uh, also, uh, also th they say, I know someone who bought a bunch of iron cask aged Dongding in Taiwan. Iron cask. Wow. I would love to see that. And how heavy what exactly that is. I don't iron know. Cask? A cask is like a. Just a little barrel? I, like I guess inner? so, yeah. 
Mm. Like uh, it has the to me it means like kind of a barrel, but I'm sure let us know what like mm, iron like cast how big or that. Yeah, was it like a like a football size? Don't ding, not ding dong. Ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> ding dong. The, the witch is dead. Don't ding the witch is dead. <laughs> and then D. So let us know like what what was the size because that's um, intriguing. Mm. And D. Diversified says, "Wow, that's a great idea to use steamer baskets." Yeah, mm. we thought so too. Mm. Really, yeah. really, really that was interesting. Really nice. All right, so now I can position the book and they don't have to get all dizzy. <laughs> we're gonna shoot back. I'll go back to book only, guys, for this read because especially I'm on the the right side of the page now. Nice. All right, so here we go. Usage one: selecting tea canisters that made in different materials according to different kinds of tea. Tea, for example, it is better to store Iron Mercy goodness jasmine tea or strong flavored tea in the tin cans, porcelain canisters, or the canisters that do not absorb flavors. However, puar must be stored in the gallipots which have good ventilation because puar can promote its fragrance and texture by mixing with the air and resulting in slow changes. Um, I'm going to do two as well and then we'll do one and two. Mm -hmm. Two, after purchasing various tea, it is better to store them into different canisters and label each canister with the name, purchase date, etc. to make it easy to use. Maybe I'll finish all of these, we'll just come back. Okay. Three. Don't put tea canisters in the kitchen or wet areas. Not being under direct sunlight or close to smelly and heat sources. Not being together with clothes and preferably in a cool and dry place. And four, new bought tins or the canisters being kept, other articles that remain odor, could be put in a little tea powder and covered with lid, put aside for one or two days, then pour out the powder to release the odor. All right. So let's go to the... Uh, Back to both. So, so basically, this is the first. So, gallipots. This is the ba first place I kind of figured out they're not airtight. Because remember, I said I looked it up, and the English translation was glazed. Mm. And then here, I was kind of like, what? So now that's all kind of come clear for me. I was mm. pretty confused at the time of first reading when I got down to uh, this section. Gallipots have good ventilation. I was like, huh? Because when I look it up in the dictionary, I saw that they were glazed, not earthenware. And now it makes sense. And basically what are we getting at here is just uh, where to store different teas, right? Which we kind of touched on a little bit already, mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. um, so, but mo mostly this was understandable, right? I didn't mm -hmm. have any major problems with it. Same with two. Um, after purchasing various tea, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Uh, too, sorry, just. Uh, no, that's okay. Just, <laughs> I'm so thinker. So I think the because they talk about the uh, poor must be stored in gallipot, mm. which is that I think it, it can be changed, not changed, but you can expand that uh, to say any tea you want to age. You know, like oolong, you might want to. If you uh. want to preserve the oolong and the drink that in the near future, you put that in the. Uh, poor, uh, non Fully porous, is, yeah, yeah, glazed wine. If you are thinking about aging this oolong or doing something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can put that in this kind of a uh, uh, pottery. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah. it's not really like super breathable, right? But yeah. it it, def it should have some um, uh, breathability. Yes. Cool. And so not just puar, but any tea you want to age, any dark tea or oolong, mm -hmm. even white tea. Yes. People are aging white tea. Yes. So cool. That's a great uh, clarification. So two after purchasing. Mm. Two is something I have been so bad with. And it's what we talked about a moment ago, right? It's after <laughs> purchase, better to put your tea out of the yeah. bag and into a proper storage container, yes. right? Mm. My bad is I just never label that. <laughs> oh, labeling, yes. Labeling is very important. Labeling with the purchase date and mm. the tea name is so important. Yeah. I just have, I just blindly like have trust on your, my memory. <laughs> yeah, I've got to say your mom is great with that. She sends she us all great. kinds of tea samples. And even when yes. we were, you were still down south and we were in Beijing, I was getting ready to go yeah. back and she was packing me little samples. And she's just jiggle jiggle writing on all the pack or give me a pen. Yes. And she write tells me what it is and she's like, write it down. And I had I wrote that in English, which was even more useful. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's very good. Mm. Like that's why in some, we have some video tasting with her. 
and stuff, you will notice that it's very specific. If this tea was gifted, you know, sometimes the, in the tea circle, you have a lot of situations. Some you really don't know much about the tea. He, she will label everything very clear. Say, for example, this is the tea, especially with the aged teas that she will gift it. Uh, she was. Um, label that this is the tea claimed to be from the 90s mm -hmm. gifted uh, on uh, 2002 April the 4th right. and uh, stuff like that like kept would, in wherever it was stored for that time yeah, or yeah. So, yeah. so it's very specific so when she sees it uh, she knows mm. and when we taste it we know okay what's the situation yeah. and yeah. not like a now when we have it we know at least this tea is from you know say 2002 like 18 years because yeah. it's on our hand for this time mm -hmm. that kind of thing yeah it's very important to label that. and I'll, I'll try to improve yeah and i'll shoot something out from experience too if mm. you are labeling something you're planning on aging avoid mm. stickers Okay, they dry up and fall off and you'll be very frustrated when you open the closet and the stickers have all, have all mixed up. On the, no, I'm not blaming you. It just happened to me as well. The stickers fall off, get a Sharpie and write right on the canister. You know, worst case, rubbing alcohol can take that off in the future. But uh, stickers fall off, which can be like really like traumatizing. You know, I found the best, best way is a paper, just a mm. white paper, write a stick in the Stick tea it in the, the jar, bag. yeah. Why? Because the sometimes we have those in Ziploc the, or plastic bag and I use the Sharpies and they slowly, slowly, slowly disappear. Yeah. Mm, that's a good point too. I that's really actually even better. Paper is uh, so yeah. far, I think the best way. Yeah. That's a it great, doesn't go anywhere. Great tip. Mm. All right. And then um, again, I found three pretty easy to understand. Um, Right? Uh, people ask us, you know, when, we're, when they're buying T2, where do I keep it? Well, don't keep it in a place with lots of smells, like kitchen is typically not good. You don't want somewhere where it'll get wet. Mm -hmm. um, pretty straight up here. Mm -hmm. And I found it interesting, not, with, not in the closet, not with clothes. So I would have never thought to put tea there, but you never know if somebody has a uh, small place, they might yeah. need a place yeah. to tuck it away. Again, these are recommendations, right? But yeah. And four was interesting. Um, mm -hmm. the, it's a kind of a. It's a little like confusing in English oh. because of the word tea powder. Oh I yes, was, yes. I wasn't sure what's going on. Like, do you just want to use some shake or some um, fannings from the bottom of a bag? Yes. But uh, yes, you don't have to make a powder. It's just the main. Sometimes in the bottom of the bag or something, there's so little shakes or stuff. You can use those, or you can use a little bit of the tea. That you're about to put in so basically mm. this is like a simple step how to um, like season the yeah or or like yeah prepare right? like how people would season mm -hmm. the teapot yeah. this is yeah. how you get your uh tea canister or tea storage container ready yeah you got it home from the store and it has that new that new smell mm -hmm. That's a smell, right? You don't yeah. necessarily want that smell. You can open tea. that for a bit, let it mm -hmm. go, then put in the put a bit of old, shakes a or, bit of shake or yeah. a couple grams yeah. of tea. It has to be kind of, it has to be the tea you are about to use. You, if mm. you are putting in the green tea or black tea, but you actually is going to use this uh, canister for pour, then that's kind of a, not the right way to go. Right, right. right. So, uh, and that's about sums it up. This is basically, basically you're trying to remove the odors from your, mm -hmm. your brand new container. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So that is a Sunday tea book for episode wow. seven. Wrap that's that up. Great. Think, let's check on the comments. Yeah. Let's have the quick check on the comments here. Uh, oh, and there's, oh, it back to the iron cask. Okay. Uh, it, H. A. Holiday says it was a large container, but I didn't see it. Probably at least four to five gallons. Oh. Oh man, I would love to see that. Iron That's big. That's mm. big. That's like uh, the size of our bucket. Uh, sorry, I got to give her a reference because gallons is uh, is quite a bit, and I'm not even sure if I'm right, but I think that's about the size of a a pretty good sized bucket, right? Mm. Kind of like that. Oh, that would be cool. And Simmerji says he uses masking tape and a pencil for nice. his labels. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, Josh, welcome back. 
And he says, oh, drat, because uh, we're just summing up. Great timing, but don't worry, the uh, video will be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, D Subversified, if I hope I'm pronouncing that right, says, thank you. Uh, great read, thank you. All right, That's so, awesome. um, yes. So I hope you enjoyed today's content, and uh, the, uh, the, the, the full translation version will be up on our website yep, soon. very shortly, and as well as some of the links we referred to during the video. Mm -hmm. um, don't forget to uh, click that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video and found it helpful. Hopefully, where there are lots of good practical things you can take away with you into your tea practice from tonight's uh, tea read. Join us next week at our regular time, Sunday. we're talking about kettles and teapot. Mm. Kettles and teapot. teapots, OK? OK. And uh, clay teapot, right? Mm. Like, so really. Super interesting session coming up next week. So join us. 1 p.m. We'll be back to our regular yes. time. Yes. And uh, eight, sorry, I, there's lots of comments coming in. I don't want to say goodbye yet, but we gotta wrap up. <laughs> Josh that's says fun. five gallons is about 18 liters. Wow, that's a ton. Yeah, oh, it's wow. a lot of tea. Okay. All right. Anyway, wow. so I guess that's it then. Thanks for yes, giving us. Yes. He's always googling for us while we uh, yeah, while that's we do really, that. Thank really you. Handy. It's super helpful, Josh. Yes. But until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, hang on. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs>